good morning. My name is Mrs. Kakaro. and this is my fifth grade math class and today we're going to continue our work on multiplying decimals. Good morning leaders. Good morning. We have our problem of the day on the board. Your math journal should be open and your four square is set up. The school store is having a sale on rulers. Each ruler is on sale for 92 cents. Each student in Ms. Gold's class decides to buy a ruler. There are 26 students in Ms. Gold's class. How much will the class spend on rulers at the class store? <coughs> Make sure you have your understand, plan, solve, and look back organizer ready. The question we are answering goes in the middle. I will give you about three minutes to work before we begin going over it. Very nice. It's one way that you can check multiplication. You could, you could use a different strategy. You could check it with the algorithm. Good work so far. Okay, about one minute left. Okay, so let's figure out what is the question that we are trying to um, find out? What are we trying to answer? Daniel. Yes, how much money will the class spend? Will we spend? My pen is a little, you know how that works. Okay, so which parts of the problem do we already understand? What do we already know? Fruit. We already understand that every ruler is equal to 92 cents. Okay, every ruler is 92 cents. Can I say it is 92 cents per ruler? Yes. How do I know? that this is 92 cents. <coughs> Juliana. Yes, and our dollar sign tells us that we're dealing with money. Okay, what else do we know? What else is important information for our problem? Zion. There are 26 students. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to know? Isaac. Uh, each student buys one ruler for 92 cents. Yes, each student buys one. That is important information. Okay. Somebody asked me, this is, a, is this a multiplication problem? Thumbs up if in your plan you put the operation multiplication. Yes. Our plan is to multiply. How did you figure that out? Mariah. Yes. And the key word being each, right? So we have to, we could add 92 cents 26 times. But who has time for that, right? Multiplication is repeated addition. So we're going to multiply here. Okay, have we actually multiplied with decimals yet? No. No. But looking at this problem, we have estimated before. So tell me about 92 cents. What comes to your mind when you're trying to figure this out and trying to get an estimate of what your answer should be, how much the class spent? What do you know about 92 cents? Darren. 
It's close to 90 cents. Farouk? Right. It is, but we're going to go with the exact number 26, and we're going to really focus on the 92. So 92, is, is it closer to 90 cents, or is it closer to a dollar? It's closer to 90 cents. So, does, so if we have 26 students, each ruler is about 90 cents, can we expect, what can we expect our answer to be? Less than what? Think about it. I see some hands going halfway. Olivia, what was your thought? Definitely. Okay, I'm going to give you 20 seconds to speak with the people at your table and just think of an estimate about how much do you think she's going to spend before we actually solve it. So 92 cents is not quite a dollar, right? So that would mean that your answer would be less than how much money? If, it, if the rollers were about a dollar a piece, then how much would we spend if, it, if we had one? Right, but it's less than a dollar? So what, what can we expect our answer to be? But definitely less than 26, right? Okay. Okay, wrap up your thought. Put your thumb up when you are ready. All right, let me hear from a table. Who wants to share out what they came up with? Joseph. Because you solved it? Okay, so what, so does that re answer sound reasonable to you and why? Why is that a reasonable answer? Yes. Farouk. Yeah. So 92 cents is not quite a dollar. It's less than a dollar. If, we add, if, if the rulers were a dollar a piece, then we would know we were going to spend $26. But since it, they are less than a dollar, we can estimate that our answer is going to be less than $26. Okay, so let's set it up as a multiplication problem. Does it matter if I put 92 or 26 first? No, we can arrange them either way. I can put my decimal point up there, but we're going to worry about it at the end. I'm going to solve this using the algorithm for now. Six times two is? Twelve. Nine times six is? Fifty-four. Fifty-four. Fifty-four plus one is? Fifty-five. Okay, I need to make sure I bring down my zero. Two times two is? And 9 times 2 is 18. 18. All right, when I add all of that up, I get, I'm going to scoot over here, I get. I get 2, 3, 9, 2. Okay, does it make sense if I stick the decimal point here so that I have 2, and 392,000. No. Does no. this make sense? No. no. What would make sense about where I put this decimal point? Nadia. <laughs> right, so if I put the decimal point between the three and the nine, what, um, what number is this, or what price is this? How much money is this? Who haven't I heard from today? How much money is this? Written just like this. Thomas. 
$23.92. Thumbs up if you agree. Good. Okay, we knew to put the decimal point there because it made sense for the, for the problem that we were working on. But we could also think of it, we could also know that there are two numbers behind the decimal point in this problem. So that's how many places we move back. Okay, so there's two numbers behind the decimal point up here. So in our answer, we make sure that we have our decimal point two places to the left. Okay, so what, was our estimate correct? Is our total less than $26? Yes. Yes, one second for it. Okay, um, so looking back, we checked the reasonableness of our answer, and this is correct. Okay. Any questions? Yes, for it. You, you could do that too. Yes, and we're going to talk more about that in small group today. All right, speaking of small group. We are about to get into our um, math groups, and you're focusing on this right here. Okay, we're going to focus today on the learning target. I can estimate and determine the product of two numbers involving decimals. I can solve multi-step problems involving multiplication of decimals. So these are the two things we are focusing on in our workshop today. Before I tell you what you're doing in each group, please review with me the MAC workshop <coughs> norms. Let's read out the first one. I, I will be an active listener. That means if someone is speaking, you are making eye contact and you are listening. I will make connections between math and the world around me. We're talking about why decimals are important and why we need to understand them. I will talk about my thinking in math. I will use different <coughs> strategies to help me solve problems. And this is the most important one. I will do my best work, whether working collaboratively or independently. We are going to be working with manipulatives when you're with me, so making sure to use those responsibly as well. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we're going to, um, <coughs> was it that talked about, you said partial products, right? Yeah, so we're going to talk more about that today using our manipulatives. All right, but before I hand these out, we're going to talk about what these represent, okay? So when we're talking about decimals, this represents what number? One whole. One whole, right. This represents one tenth of the whole. Good. <coughs> and then the little itty bitty piece represents one thousand. I mean hundred. One one hundredth. How many little pieces are oh. here? One hundred. Ten groups of ten. One hundred. So this, when we're working with decimals, one, one tenth, one one hundredth. Okay. All right, so if I was just doing a multiplication <coughs> problem, I'm going to hand out just a handful of these. I can always give you more if you need them. When we're doing a regular multiplication problem, let's say that we're, I'm asking you to show me 2 times 3. How would you show me, using these blocks, 2 times 3? Yes. Use your blocks to show me in an array two times three. I have all these two. <laughs> yes. Oh, um, like a square. Think, think about your partial products. Turtle something? No, it's 
All right, so here's my two, two here, and here's my one and three tenths. Okay, so what do I need? What fills in down here? Three tenths, good. Okay, what is the answer to two times one and three tenths? Two and six tenths. Oh, oh. Thank you for joining our fifth grade class today. Hope you enjoyed our lesson on decimals. Go on!